Hey, welcome everybody to Rock and Country Church Wednesday night Bible study. Glad you could join us online. We're going to be in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6. We're going to look at uh, verse 4, 5, and 6 again, because uh, 7 and 8 reflect that. So we're going to just touch back on it for a moment. Uh, I do want you to go back, if you missed last week's uh, Bible study, go back and uh, look at it. You can look at it on YouTube or Facebook or Sorry, I don't really know where it is, to tell you the truth. I think they put it on YouTube. But uh, anyway, go back. Uh, I know it's on Facebook, so go back and look at it. And uh, uh, it's very important to understand chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. All right? Many people think that's where it says that you can lose your salvation, but you better take a look at that again. All right? Anyway, God bless you for being here tonight. We're going to do our prayer request and praise reports in just a little bit. Uh, we got a lot of people here tonight, so we're going to try to... Keep it short and direct and uh, move on through. I'd like to get you to uh, join us uh, Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. on RCC TV. We're doing still in the book of Ephesians there for a Bible study. And then we'll take a short break. You can join us for our Sunday service at 10 a.m. on Facebook. The RCC Bible, uh, the RCC TV is on YouTube. And the uh, Sunday service is on Facebook. So join us for those, and then join us every Wednesday night here for uh, on Facebook for our 645 Bible study. So God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. We're going to do our prayer requests and praise reports. If you have any prayer requests, Kenny is monitoring. So if you will type those in, he will get those, and we will add them to our list and lift them up to the Lord as well. Thank you very much again, and let's start with Miss Laurie, please. I'm just making my usual. Your usual, all right. Hey, congratulations on the new baby, too. Logan, a little uh, horse, horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> well, just not a baby like we would normally yeah. say, but okay. Uh, horse, colt. Looks like his mama. Yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah, it's it's got a star and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah everything. Yeah. yeah. Good deal, good deal. All right, thank you, Laurie. All right, um, uh, Jenna. Jenna. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do my usual, but then I just want to praise God. Amen. I just, he has been so awesome through everything that happened last week. Amen. It's been awesome. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Great. See, I, I like that attitude. It's kind of like I was trying to talk about Terry Sunday. Terry looks at everything as the cup is full, half full. Never half empty. Always half full. Always a positive attitude. And that's what I was talking to my sister. Remember I was telling her about her electricity coming on? Not my sister, my daughter. And uh, you just got to be positive. You give yes. God thanks and praise for what you do have. Not, what you, yeah, not complaining about what you don't have. Yes. Right? right? Amen. Good deal. Good, deal. good deal. Good deal. All right. Uh, Angie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to pray for the usual. Uh -huh. Everybody. Church. Family. Amen. All right. Country. Good. You bet. You bet. Good deal. Good deal. All right, Brother Thomas. It's Edie and, Tom, uh, Edie and, Edie and Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, brother. God bless you. I get it right here. Yeah, there you go. All right, Sister Edie. Uh, my usual. And um, Billy Corn. Mm. Yeah, he's coming down with something, and he is very, very ill, so we understand. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No, that's All right. My usual covers everything I think there is. Yeah. <laughs> it does, it does. There you go. Thank you. And it's easier to write because her list is long. Hey. Hey, look, I'm like, like you, I believe, praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes. I mean, we are so blessed, blessed every bet. day you bet. that we wake up that, and know that God loves us. Yeah. Oh, my God. Preach it, sister. For no, no reason. That's right. That's the thing for no reason at all. Yes. Yeah. Bless us. Amen. And I just think that's marvelous. That Me too. Marvelous. Thank you. All right, Sister Myra. Me and George, uh, the seven points fire chief and his wife both have COVID. Oh, man. And so we want to lift up them. I told her I would put her on our prayer list tonight. Right. And my girls. All right. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Sister Kathy. Okay, I'm going to say my usual, but I have some other things I don't usually have. Mm -hmm. Some of us went uh, shopping on Market Street yesterday. What'd you buy me? And we went into the nest, and the lady there, I don't know if she's the owner or the manager, but we started talking to her, and uh, her name is Linda Hacker, and I want prayers for her and her husband. 
either two days before or two days after <coughs> Christmas, their house burned down over here at the golf course. Uh, yes, I know that. And yeah. uh, so she was staying with the daughter. She just moved into the Hamlin. Mm -hmm. And her husband has Alzheimer's. Oh, He's in Corsicana, mm -hmm. staying at a mm -hmm. home there. Right. But the blessing here is we got to talking, found all this out. Mm -hmm. We invited her to church. We prayed with her. Good. And Go so she's all excited about coming. I hope she comes. She said, I don't want to go because it will be all couples. I said, oh, are you wrong? Anyway, and then the other thing is, because I know there's a lot of people here. I want to pray for the families of Brittany Spurgeon, I think was her last name, and Chris Hood right, right. from Seven Points. Right, right. Pray for their families. You bet. And then, of course, I pray to God for everything. Amen. Amen. He was 46. All right, thanks. All right, Barbara, Sister Barbara. Um, I'd like to pray for my family, and especially my daughter. She had just had her annual checkup, and one of her tests came back not so good, and she's going to have to have further testing. Mm -hmm. So just remember her. Amen. What's Amen. her name? Stephanie. All right. That's easy to remember. <laughs> Amen. All right, we'll lift her up, you bet. All right, Sister Judy. Pray us sit down. Well, I don't get anymore. All right. <laughs> yeah, we were just standing here. Uh, I get a car back pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And just pray that he put me through all of it and let it come. Keep going. There you go. Amen. He's got you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Brother William. My mom and I, mm -hmm. we're glad to hear our land, our church, our military. Four uh, instructions. Uh, everything he has done for me, including bringing me back from Persia Gulf for a hallelujah to him. Amen. Amen. Good deal. All right, Sister Carolyn. Okay, uh, William and I, our church, the country, our leaders, um, and the T.C. Richard family, um, he lost his wife this week. It's one of my that. cousins. He lost his wife this right. week. Um, and another cousin, Jackie, uh, her house flooded, mm -hmm. so they had to move out mm -hmm. of their house, and they said it'd be six to eight weeks at least before <coughs> they can move back into their house. Mm -hmm. And then, um, for everyone here, and uh, Jack's prayer. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right, Sister Margo. Everyone here. Amen. Our church. Mm -hmm. My family. You and Terry. Thank you. And my daughter. All right. Yeah, don't forget George. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you forget Marco. <laughs> All right, Brother George. For my wife. There you go. Margo. Uh, for everything that God does for me every day. Hey, Amen. Give him praise. Pray for our prayer meeting. Be with Brother, our pastor as he stands before us and tells us the word. Thank you, sir. And everybody here. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, Brother Jack. Nora and Jack. Amen. Time and Mark me. <laughs> and Foreign Spoken. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Sister Nora. Well, I just have a lot of blessings because we had a wonderful trip. It only took us 19 hours to get home, but we got that safe. And the only thing wrong with the house was one pinhole in the kitchen sink. Wow. So everything was fine. And it was just, I mean, we had many blessings while we were there. Good deal. Not some that I wanted, but, you know, I mean, that I wished would have happened. Right. That's what I mean. So some, they did? No, they oh, didn't. Oh, okay. No. All right. All right. But that's okay. That's yep. their problem, not mine. There you go. There you <laughs> so, go. And I have four unspokens. Okay. All right. Thank you, sister. All right, Brother Kenny. All right. Right now all we have is, is Chris's, Chris Roby. His usual, two unspokens and all God's children. Amen. For me, it's, you know, again, my usual. I stand in agreement with what everybody said. Uh, just pray for the country. Continue, continually pray for for this country. And 
our church, the outreach the church has, that we that we somehow grow in this critical time that we're in. I, 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 I pray that people open their eyes and realize that they need to get closer to God and they've got to find a place to do it. Sure. And this is one of the places they can do it. Right. And, uh, you know, ask, you know, God to keep uh, his hand on you and Terry. Thank and, you. Uh, you know, we're, every, every day I open my eyes, I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. Uh, anyway, you know, I look in the mirror and I say, what's God keeping you around for? It now? <laughs> <laughs> well, take me home. But uh, no, he's he's a wonderful God. And, uh, you know, life is really good. There's a lot of things people can complain about. Most of us generally do. Right. Myself included. Right. But there's so much more that we give praises for. And just the opportunity to come and gather is a praise God. It is. And that's about all I got. All right, sir. Thank you. All right, sister wife. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. My usual, which is our church, um, our family, and people at, yeah, people at my job. And um, let's see. Uh, I got message from um, somebody that has only been here a few times. They, uh, Her name is um, Yolanda Sorrell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, she came down with COVID, so she, oh, she asked for prayer. And then her husband uh, is Jody, I think. Uh -huh. And he he got a bad report at the doctor. Uh, what was it, liver failure? No, not failure, but some kind of a liver infection or something yeah, like that. Yeah, liver infection. Uh, yeah. yeah, so they're both sick. So she asked for prayer. Okay. And um, he'll probably mention it, but I just, I got it on my heart of Don Griffin's son, Don and Remus. Stephen. Griffin, Stephen. Yep. Oh, that's Stephen. Yeah. 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 It's, his oldest, it's his oldest son. His youngest son is Scotty. He's in the ICU? Um, I'm sure he is. Yeah. Very sick. Very sick, and he has a young wife and kids. And right. It's just real hard uh, what they're going through because they need uh, some answers. So right. Pray for that family. Yeah, the hospital has said that, uh, which we just got notice on that, the hospital said he's in uh, Dallas, I guess, at Presbyterian Dallas. I don't know that that is where it is, but it's a Dallas hospital that has neurolog neurological specialists, mm -hmm. and they're saying that he had a stroke. And it has affected his brain. They're saying that he has uh, just a lot of different things. But anyway, I don't want to speculate because I, I can't remember everything. But anyway, he's a young guy, and uh, the neurologist has said, the second neurologist has said, just let him just progress and see where it goes. That, that's where they're at. It's not going up or down, evidently. It's just they want to see where it's going to progress. So. What all that entails, uh, you know, I don't know. Our nurse may know more, but, you know, the thing is, is he's very, very sick. And it just, bam, just came on just like that. So, yeah, so anyway, it's not a good thing. And, and also two unspoken. And that's yeah. it. All right, good deal, good deal. Um, well, I want to give a praise report. Uh, we talked about Don, so, and his son. Um, I mean, I was worried about DJ's. Uh, outcome on his uh, exam and all, and what it is is it's a he had a tumor in his mouth or on his jaw or whatever, and uh, they didn't know what it was. And if they'd have cut it out, he'd have started losing teeth and just oh no no no. But anyway, it never got bigger. It stayed exactly the same. And so what they've determined that it is is whatever I put on there, some big long word. But it's, uh, it's something that happens periodically to people. And it happens primarily at the, at the root of your teeth on your jawbone. And it's a tumor, and it eventually turns itself into bone. I mean, that's how they explained it. So, you know, uh, he's got to go back every six months to have it checked to see if it's bigger or smaller. As long as it doesn't grow, then it's, hopefully it's going to be okay. 
but anyway, uh, you know, he was really worried about it because when you say tumor, you know, that's not a good thing. And uh, that's exactly what they called it. And, uh, but anyway, this is whatever it is. It's cementose, osseo something or whatever, whatever it is. And, uh, no, 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 no. And it's a, uh, it's a tumor that's not uncommon and uh, it generally goes to bone, becomes bone. Oh, interesting. It, it's the first time I ever heard of it, but anyway, but we were, we were worried about it, and so I thank everybody for your prayers, God has answered, he answers prayers, man, he is awesome, yes, and yes. Uh, I give him all the praise and thanks for taking care of my son, and I hope I do his son justice in everything I do, all right? And in two days, he's going to be 30. Yeah, two days, he'll, he'll be 30. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a, another family that is close to him and close to us and my other kids that um, their son, which was DJ's best friend, his best man at his first wedding, etc. Uh, Y'all may remember him. I don't know Dylan. Yeah. 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 He killed himself, you know, a couple of years back. And uh, anyway, uh, yesterday was his birthday. And today is Weston. If you all remember Weston, today is his birthday. And then the next day is DJ's birthday. So they were all right there together, the three amigos. And uh, anyway, everybody's missing Dylan real bad, and especially his mom. We left his mom up because uh, she lost Dylan. And then within three months or something like that, she lost her other son. And so two sons right in a row. And uh, anyway, very devastating time for her. So we left her up. Um, don't mean to end on a bad note, but uh, God's got it, so I'm not going to worry about it. And uh, we just continue lifting all things up to Him and trusting Him and Him alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so let's pray up our teaching tonight, and then we'll get to our teaching. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, that we can come into Your house. Thank You. Oh, thank You for this beautiful weather we've been having, Lord. Man, it is so awesome to go from uh, minus 2 to 83 or whatever it was. You know, it's, yeah. it's great, Lord, and I, I thank you for this kind of weather. Uh, you can send the cold back up to Alaska where they like it. But anyway, Lord, we, uh, we give you all the praise and glory in all things, and we thank you for all things, Lord, absolutely everything, including the breath of life itself. Father, we ask you to be with us tonight, open up our hearts, minds, souls, and spirits so that we may receive the word that you have for us to learn tonight, Lord. Uh, teach us your word, Lord. Teach us your, your son, Jesus, and who he is and everything about him, Lord. Let us grow closer and closer and closer to him so that we may become more and more and more like him. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for that you have provided a way for us to spend eternity with y'all. And that is through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I didn't mean to mash your hands, but I did. Well, I do have a praise. Yes, ma'am. She went yesterday and got her lab work done, and all of her numbers are still Woo-hoo! fine. Way to go, Sandy uh, Taylor. I'm so happy for her. Go, God, go. Amen. All right. <clears throat> We're going to start in Hebrews 6. We're going to start in 7. I want you to read 7 and 8, please, Miss Nora. And then just stop there, and then we're going to talk a little bit. Okay? Verses 6 and 7? Uh, verses 7 and 8 in chapter 6. Okay, all right. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed whose end is to be burned. All right, now this is, this is pretty plain and simple is what it talks about, but, but don't start thinking in an agri- agricultural sense, which is the, what the writer wrote. He wrote it in an agri- agricultural sense because the Israel over there at this particular time was an agricultural society. I mean, that's, people understood that. They understood. That's why Jesus taught planting the seed. The seed that falls on hard ground has this. The seed that falls on uh, a good ground has this, et cetera, et cetera. The seed that falls in the thorn in the thistle has this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's over in uh, around uh, Matthew 13, which we're going to go to in just a second. So go ahead and find Matthew 13, if you will. But I want to talk a little bit more about this and explain what the writer is talking about. If you go back up here to 4, 5, and 6, which I'm going to read through real quick, uh, then you bring 7 and 8 into it, hopefully I can uh, help you understand exactly what the writer is talking about. 
It is impossible, verse 4, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. Now, this doesn't say salvation, this says repentance, okay? Brought back to repentance for their loss that... To their loss, they crucified the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. So in other words, what the writer is saying here is, is that how in the world can you know all about Jesus, if you will, or know, have a personal relationship with Jesus and not want to benefit His kingdom? How, how could you realize all the blessings that He gives you and has poured out on you? And we've heard several of those tonight. Just... I just want to give God thanks for everything He's done for me. Well, how are you going to bless Him back? Oh, I'm just going to give Him thanks. And I'm not trying to put anything on anybody, okay? I'm not saying that. <clears throat> but my, my deal is, is why are we here? We're here to build God's kingdom. That's our purpose, okay? Our purpose is not us once we're saved. Our purpose is not about us anymore. It's about building God's kingdom. So in other words, why in the world are we not doing what God has called us to do, which is continue the work of Christ, which is bring people into the kingdom? You see what I'm saying? All right? So how in the world can you, can one, I'll put it this way, how in the world can one experience all the blessings that God lays out on you, and then you not do anything for Him in return? You see what I'm saying? Don't you, don't, I know this is me, but don't, shouldn't we feel like, well, you know, what can I do for you, God? I mean, let me, let me do something for you, not to pay him back, because you'll never repay him. I mean, you, we can't pay back what Christ has done for us. But wouldn't it be great if somebody, uh, if, if somebody did something for you, wouldn't you want to do a favor back to them? Yeah. I mean, isn't that kind of our human nature, right? Now, think of it this way. What did Jesus say over in the book of Matthew where he says, give and it shall, or over in Luke 6, he says, give and it shall be given unto you. Okay? In other words, Jesus is given to us. All right? So, shouldn't we try to give him something back? I mean, shouldn't we show, try to show some appreciation? Shouldn't we have a heart of appreciation? Yeah. Shouldn't we have an attitude of gratitude? Okay? I mean, we should. I'm not saying you do or you don't, but we should. And I can only use me because Terry won't allow me to talk about her uh, because of all the things that God has done for me in my life that I didn't deserve, just like Edie was saying a while ago. And he still loves me. All, all, all that junk that I've done all my life, and he still loves me. Figure that one out. Okay? Well, how can I show him that I love him by I mean, yeah, I worship Him, I praise Him, I, I try to glorify Him, but I show Him, and this is what we are called to do, I show Him my gratitude, if you will, by serving you, and in serving you, I serve Him. You see what I'm saying? You see? Because I can't serve Him directly because He's not here. The Holy Spirit's here, okay? But Jesus himself is not here, so I can't actually, hey Jesus, can I get you a cup of water? Hey Jesus, can I bring you some new sandals? Hey Jesus, can I dust your sandals off? Hey Jesus, can, what do you want me to do, Lord? I'll do whatever you want me to do. Well, what he wants me to do is serve you. You see what I'm saying? Right. Now, I'm not calling you to do that. I'm just saying, this is what he wants. He wants you to continue his work, which is to build his kingdom. Okay? So how in the world, what the writer is saying in verse 7 and verse 8, he says, the land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, remember this is agricultural, okay, often falling on it, uh, and that produces a crop useful to those whom the father, farmer receives the blessing of God. You see that? In other words, if you do as God has called you to do because of the blessings you have received, in other words, you try to bless God back, then God is going to continue blessing you because you're doing what He wants you to do. You're, you're, you're taking in the rain or you're taking in the blessings of God and you're using it usefully by building His kingdom. You want to, you want to get blessed by God? Then bless God. It's that simple. Okay? If you want to... Oh, I wish God would bless me with this. wish God would bless me with that. Well, then bless Him. Be See, ready, though. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But but here here's here's a big deal. 
Try to outgive God. And I'm not talking monetarily, okay? I'm not talking monetarily. I mean, that is included. But try to outgive God. You cannot do it. I guarantee you, you want blessings to pour out on you? Then you try to get outgive God. And he'll show you that you ain't so tough after all. You ain't nothing. I mean, and it does work. Don't think that it doesn't, okay? And I'm not talking about monetarily. I'm not talking about your money, all right? I'm talking about your blessings. Yeah. You try to do... I mean, I do... I don't do it all perfectly by any means. No one does. But I try to do the best I can, but I try to do it on a continual basis. Now, Terry would probably say, yeah, well, you need to bless me then. <laughs> no. But, but we're married, so that don't count. All right? <laughs> my point is... is I'm, Keep digging. I'm trying, to, trying, I'm trying to sleep in my bed tonight. <laughs> But the thing is, is you try to bless, out bless God. But now, how do you bless God? You bless Him by blessing others. All right. You try to try to do it. I challenge you to try to do it. Okay. He'll pour out the blessings on you, shaking down, pressed, and, sh and running over, poured out in your lap. You can't do it. Okay. Now remember, that's the only thing He says, "Test me in." Okay. All right. Don't go test Him any. Well, I wonder if God likes this or doesn't like this. Well, if it doesn't agree with him, he don't like it. All right? So, if you bless God, he's going to pour the blessings out on you. Now, I'm not saying if you give $100, he's going to give you $1,000. That's not what I'm saying. All right? What I'm saying is you cannot outgive God. All right? Now, verse 8. But land that produces thorn and thistle is worthless. So, in other words, if you're not doing... You're not blessing God. I mean, Jesus said this very simply. You're either for us or you're against us. Okay? It's just that simple. You're either doing the will of God or you're not doing the will of God. And I'm not saying that this or that or the other is the will of God. All right? The will of God is first and foremost for you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. All right? That's the will of God. And then Jesus will take it from there on by the power of the Holy Spirit. But if you're not doing anything... Oh, well, I just expect God to just keep blessing me, blessing me, blessing me, blessing me, blessing me, and blessing me, just because I'm such a good person. Okay? Well, you probably are a good person. You probably are. And you know what? God may continue blessing you. All right? But look at the latter part of that verse. It is in danger of being cursed, and in the end, it will be burned. In the end, it will be burned. And that means burnt up. In other words, in the eternal lake of fire. Now, let's go over to Matthew 13, starting at verse uh, 24, go 24 through 30. Matthew 13, let me get there with you. Matthew 13, Matthew 13, starting at uh, verse, th what did I say, 24, 24. right? Yeah. Yeah. The parable of the wheat and the tares. Right. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, Okay, listen, please. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. Okay, stop for just a second. Now, does he know what tares is? He's, he's talking about weeds. Okay, that's, that's the easiest way to put it, is weeds. Now, when you, I've actually taught on this before here at the church, here recently actually. Tares is a weed that looks just, it kind of looks like Johnson grass, but it kind of looks like wheat. It grows in a long stalk. It has the heads just like wheat does. The only difference is the heads of wheat turn brown. The heads of tares, if you will, or these particular weeds, turns purple. That's the only way to tell the difference of them. They, they look almost identical as far as the plant. You can't actually see the difference between them until they mature. All right? So then that will tell you a little bit of something. All right, 27, please. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go out and gather them up? But he said, no, least while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. 
And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Okay. Now, the teaching there that Jesus is trying to teach is that in his church, if you will, or in his relationship with mankind, you're going to have, and I'm going to use it this way, and I don't, <clears throat> I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody or anything, but you're going to have good people in church, and you're going to have not so good people in church. You're going to have true believers in church, and you're, not going, to have, and you're going to have not believers in church. You're going to have people who are sold out for Christ, and you're going to have people who are not sold out for Christ. You're going to have people who come in to uh, help the church, and you're going to have people that come in and take from the church. Okay? You're just going to have the wheat and the tares together in church. This is not talking about outside in the community. This is talking about in your uh, in your group, in your organization, in your uh, in your congregation, if you will. You're going to have good people, and you're going to have bad people. In our congregation, we have people who are here to to receive, only to receive. All right? And I'm certainly not trying to point fingers at anybody, or, but, but you have this in all churches. It's in every church. Don't think that it's not. You, are ha you have people in your church who are here for them, for themselves. And then you have people in your church who are here for the church. Okay? Our secretaries, we have all three of them here today. All right? uh, we have IT people here today. We have kitchen folks here today. On and on and on and on and on. These people are dedicated to the success of the church. All right? These are not people that are here, and I'm not trying to promote anybody or anything like that or blow smoke or anything. I'm just saying, you have people who are here to make the church work. And, then you, and not in here, but then you have other people who come to your church and are only here to receive from the church. You see what I'm getting at? Okay? If, the church doesn't, if this church doesn't succeed, then they'll go to another church. Okay? It's just the way, it's their lifestyle. It's the way they are. We had a, a lady send us a text this last uh, Sunday. Uh, I'm not trying to judge her or anything else. She basically says, uh, I need some money and y'all send me some. And, I mean, that was it in a nutshell, was it not? I mean, don't call me. Don't, don't try to find out where I live or anything like that. I need some money and I need some help and you need to send me some. That was kind of the, the, the deal. So Terry asked me, she says, uh, so are we going to, you know, acknowledge her and send her money? And I said, no, we're not. Okay. If she, if she is gumption enough, if you will, to tell me that don't call me, you know, in other words, I don't want your prayers. I just need some money. Yeah. Okay. She's watched too many of those other channels. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're, and, and you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Okay. So, but, but what Jesus is trying to teach here is, is that, in every organization, you're going to have the doers and you're going to have the takers. In every organization, including your church. Don't think that you don't. You do. Now, does that mean that we kick them out? No, we don't. Okay? It's not our, it's not our job to judge. Now, we're not going to let anybody take advantage of us. Okay? We're going to do the best we can to see to that. We're not going to let anybody take advantage of us. I mean, I've had people come in here from time to time saying, oh, I need this and I need this. Some I've helped, some I have not. Some I've told to hit the road. All right. Well, you can't tell me that. You're the pastor. I, well, that's the reason I am telling you that. Okay. And you're not getting anything. Uh, because they're lying. I mean, I can see it in their face that they're lying. I know they're lying. And the Holy Spirit tells me as well. So you just have to understand you're always going to have that. In your church. In your church. So does that mean that you kick them out? No. They'll eventually go themselves. All right? But you let God do it. All right? You let God take care of it. All right? You don't let them take advantage of you. You don't let them, uh, you know, uh, steal from the church, take from the church, etc., etc., etc. But you don't deny them either. Because in hopes, in hopes that them staying, they will sooner or later get it and realize I'm not here to receive. I'm here to give. And that's what we're all here for. We're here to give. Not, I'm not talking about giving money to the church. That's not what I'm talking about. We're here to give to each other. Okay? We're here to glorify God by serving each other. All right? That's how we serve God. All right? 
Sure, we give Him praise, we give Him honor, we give Him glory. We do that in our praying time, in our prayer time, and in our praise and worship time. That's when we praise God, right? But to make the church work, it takes every one of us, every one of us, to do our part, whatever that part happens to be, in order to make the church work. That's what he's talking about. If you've experienced the blessings of God, why are you not trying to bless God back? You see? That's what we should be doing, don't you think? I mean, do you disagree? Okay? So that's what the writer's trying to talk about. He says, if you're not going to be, uh, I'm just going to say proactive, if you're not going to be proactive, or you're not going to try to uh, build the church, then guess what? Jesus is a judge now, not us. Eventually, that good person goes to hell. Why? Because they're not, they're not, they're not related to God. You, you see, they're not related to Christ because they have no idea who Christ is. See, it's my job to try to teach who Christ is and your purpose for being here and His purpose for living in you and with you and guiding and directing you. That's my job. And I hope I do it as best I can, but I hope I'm doing it adequately. Uh, but if you don't receive it, then there's nothing I can do about that. That's up to you. But if you do receive it, then you will start learning that yeah, I'm here to serve. Just as Jesus says. He says, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're to do. Yes, we do worship, we praise, we honor, we glorify God. Okay? But part of doing that is serving <coughs> All right. I'm sorry, Kenny. You had something about an iron hill? Yeah. As Jesus goes on to explain this to his <coughs> disciples in 36 through 40. Right. Which he, he <coughs> explains what he meant by the wheat and the tares. And right. The tares are the sons of the devil. Yeah, they are. They are. They're the, that's what I said. Jesus says you're either with me or you're not. I mean, it's just that simple. You're either with Christ, that means you're the son of your children of God, or you're not children of God. And if you're not children of God, then you're children of, the, of Satan, the children of the devil. Because you, there is no other thing, all right? There, there is no, oh, well, I'm the uh, child of uh, Paul, okay? There is no child of Paul, okay? There is no, no pile, uh, child of uh, John or Matthew or Mark or Luke. Okay? You're either a child of God or you're not a child of God. Plain and simple. That's all there is to it. Okay? Alright, so that's what he's talking about here. Now, uh, are we good with everything? Alright, verse 9. Uh, beloved. Hebrew, sorry. Hebrews 6, verse 9. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation, though we speak in this manner. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints. What? And what? You minister. What? What did you just say? You ministered to the saints. Exactly what I just got through saying, all right? Of course, I said it a long, a lot, long, took a lot longer for me to say it. But do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, this is where it comes from. This is what the writer's talking about. He's not talking about you know, rain falling on the land. He's talking about us receiving the blessings and then sharing those blessings by blessing other people. The people of, of our congregation, the people of our family, the people of our communities, etc., 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 etc. All right? These are the things that come with realizing your salvation, realizing the gift you have been given. How could you not in your, in your heart of hearts, appreciate what you have unless you don't know what you have. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to heaven. You sure? What does that mean? What does it mean to go to heaven? Oh, well, when I die, I'm, I'm going wherever Jesus is at. What do you mean wherever Jesus is at? Where is Jesus? Oh, uh, I don't know. He's somewhere. See, you don't have a clue what you're talking about. Do you see what I'm saying? And I'm not saying anybody thinks this way. No. But what I'm saying is, is that people don't get into the depths of Scripture or the deepest meanings and, and, and uh, uh, explanations of Scripture because it's all surface stuff. Remember when we were talking about the elementary 
teachings and stuff, you know, uh, yeah, being baptized, uh, healing, that kind of stuff. Remember when we were talking about that? It's time to get past that. It is high time to get past all that. It's time to get into the depths of Scripture and understand what Scripture is talking about. And Scripture right here is saying, look, you need to appreciate what you have because a lot of people don't have it and they don't even know what they don't have. Now, some of them are going to refuse it no matter what. Uh, hey, do you want to know about Jesus? you want to know about salvation, Bob? No, nah, I don't care about that stuff. I was that person. I was that person. Uh, I'm good. Man, I'm good. I don't need God. You know, I got it. Then when I didn't have it, it's like, oh, crap. What do I do now? I got no place to turn except God. See? Man, can he take you to places you ain't never been before. Amen. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. It awesome. And I realized that. Like Edie was saying earlier. Despite me, or in spite of me, he still loves me. Why? Because he is God. You see? And I realized... And I told some of y'all before, you know, the, the childhood I grew up with, you know, I, I hate my childhood. To this day, I still hate my childhood. Uh, but I have the best life now than I've ever had. And I wonder why in the world did I go through all that other junk? Mm -hmm. But I went through all that stuff in order to know or appreciate, I guess you'd say, how much I have now. Mm -hmm. You see? And so until you go through some trials and tests, all right, Judy? Until you go through some trials and tests, you really don't know what you, what you have. Yeah. I don't know about, I know some of y'all understand this, but my son, DJ, he's asthmatic. I've seen him crawl the door in my truck trying to breathe as I'm rushing him to the hospital, and he can't breathe in air. I mean, my son is dying in front of me, basically. Judy knows what that's like, okay? Now she can breathe. She understands the blessings of God. We take it for granted. We just, no big deal, right? Man, try not to breathe. Here's another little trick. Go home at your house tonight that you know, okay? Your house, turn out all the lights, close your eyes and walk through your house. See what it's like to be a blind person. Your own house. Well, I know there's my chair somewhere over there. Okay? But you can't see it. Now, you have to keep your eyes closed. Okay? And walk through And then be thankful for the sight that you have. Okay? I mean, it's... Think about the little things. Okay? The big things take care of themselves. Think about the little things. All right? All right, verse uh, 11. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but Im imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Okay, inherit the promises, what has been promised. See, our promise is salvation. Our promise is eternity. Realize what all that is. And you're not going to go to hell. Okay, if you're a true believer. Realize, if nothing else, realize you don't have to spend eternity in weeping and gnashing of teeth and in agony and pain and sorrow and crying and, and hurt and, and uh, you know, just total misery. Remember when we talked about the, um, uh, the false prophet and the, and the Antichrist being cast into the eternal lake of fire alive? For a thousand years, Satan was then tossed in as well. And he in there where the false prophet and the Antichrist are alive. For a thousand years, they're suffering. Okay? Be thankful. See, we take, we're so blessed. We take everything for granted. We do. Remember over in uh, Philippians, uh, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Okay, remember that? With thanksgiving. Don't forget the with thanksgiving. We ought to be thankful for everything we have. I'm thankful the Lord made it tonight. Okay? 
She's had a lot of stuff going on in her life. She hasn't been making it. It's hard for her to drive. It's tough for her to get out. I'm thankful she made it tonight. I'm glad she's here. Okay? I'm thankful that Terry's here. I'm thankful she let me come. Okay? I mean, be thankful of everything. Okay? We take things for granted. George, he says it every, every Wednesday night. I'm thankful for everything Margo is. He, sa he says, I couldn't have done it without her. Literally. Be thankful. Okay? Don't forget the little things. Don't forget the little things. Okay? Alright, uh, verse 13. For when God made a promise to Abraham... Because he could swear by no other great, no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless you and multiply, multiplying, and I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Okay, stop there for just a second. Now, we're, gonna, um, we're not going to go back there, but if you go into uh, Genesis 12, 13, 15, 17, 19, 23, I think it is, and 27, you'll learn about the blessings of Abraham. This is it, pretty simple. The blessing of Abraham is, is God came to him and said, I will bless you through your son Isaac, because Abraham says, I don't have a son. I don't have a kid. You know, where's, where's this kid I'm supposed to have that you're going to bless me through? I guess my uh, my servant is going to receive is going to be my kid. I'm going to adopt him. And God said, "No, you're going to have a son, and I will bless you through him." And that, of course, was Isaac. All right. He said, "You will have uh, uh, be the father of nations, be the father of millions, and millions, as the stars of the heaven and as the sea, the sands of the seas are. The multitude. You will be father, the father of all of those." All right. Abraham had Isaac and a couple other kids. We don't know how many just exactly. All right. Then God told him to kill Isaac. And he's going, wait a minute. What's this supposed to be? You're going to bless me through him. And now i got to kill him. Well, I trust you, God, and you alone. So, you know, we know the story. All right. Abraham was the father of our faith. We're going to see this over in chapter 11. He is pronounced as the father of our faith. All right. That means he believed God in spite of what he thought. He believed God in spite of what the obvious was. Wait a minute, if I kill my son, how am I going to be blessed? If you're going to bless me through Isaac. But I'm going to do it anyway. All right? By faith. That is faith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's the depiction of Christ, of God giving up his son and going all the way through with it. All right? I love the story of Isaac. Um... But the thing is, is that by faith, and that's why he is called the father of our faith, by faith he believed God. In spite of everything that was obvious, by faith he believed God. It's the same way like in me praying and you guys praying for my son. I believe by faith that he was going to be healed, that he was going to be taken care of. We have prayed for Judy over and over and over and over, and we're going to continue praying for Judy. And we're going to pray for George. And we're going to pray for anybody else who wants to be prayed for. And we're going to believe by faith that it's, God's going to take care of it. All right? Yeah. Whether, you, whether it looks right or not, whether it looks obvious or not, we're going to believe by faith. George, Amira's uh, George. We're going to continue believing by faith that God is going to take care of him. And, and we entrust God to him. By faith. It's not something that obviously we say, oh, well, uh, yeah, George is healed. George is not healed yet, evidently. I mean, we I, I believe he's going to be, or that he is, or whatever. But my point is, is that, like my son, we believe by faith that it was going to be a good outcome, and now we see the good outcome, all right? Abraham never saw the multitudes of his descendants as seas of the sand, or sand of the seas and the multitudes uh, as stars in the heavens. He never saw that. Why? Because he only had a few kids. And he only lived to be X amount of years old. So he didn't see all that we see today, right? There's millions upon millions upon millions of Christ, uh, Christians. And we're all called uh, children of the father of faith, which is Abraham. You see, it is only by Abraham, his faith, that started it and showed us that we have to believe beside, in spite of the obvious. That's why he's called the father of faith. 
It was obvious that if he killed Isaac, how in the world, in human thinking, how in the world is God going to bless him? Because the blessings come through Isaac. Well, Isaac's dead. What am I supposed to do? By faith, he believed that God would either A, resurrect him, or stop him. And of course, if we know the story, God says, or the angel came and says, do not harm the boy. Okay? And God said, God spoke to Abraham and says, I know now that you are my faithful servant. So you see, it's by faith that we believe. It is by faith that we receive our salvation. It is by faith that we do the works God has called us to do. <clears throat> when I was on my tractor on that Thursday and God says, you're going to start a church, I said, <laughs> yeah, right. Who are you talking to? There ain't nobody else out here, Lord. Okay? I said, I have no idea how to do it. And I have no idea what to do, etc. And I did not. I've never started a church. I mean, I've only basically been in church for like four or five years. And he says, you're going to start a church. I said, that makes no sense. But I did say, I did say, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And here we are still, okay? You see, I, I did that, and I'm not trying to boast or brag or anything like that, please. And I, I'm sure you, I, most of you, I know, understand that. But by faith, I stepped out knowing God would take care of it. Whenever we had the, which some of you have been going here a long time, you, you know, when we had the kind of a split in our leadership at the other church, I stepped back and said, God, did I get this wrong? You know, am I, is this not what I'm supposed to do? And God says, who are you following, you or me? And I said, well, I'm following you. And he says, well, then you just carry on. And we're still here. Okay. Matter of fact, we have been overly blessed since then. Okay. He has continually blessed us. Why? Because we step out in faith. See? This is how you show your faith. It's not by, oh, yes, God, I have faith. No, it's by your actions. Okay? That's how you show your faith. Now, God knows if you have faith or not. But he says even the faith of a mustard seed can move the mountains, right? It has moved the mountains in my life. Okay? And I didn't know what faith was, in a sense. I have no idea whenever, way back then. But by faith, I stepped out, and he carried it on. And I'm not any better than any one of you. God doesn't love me any more than he loves you. By faith, you can do the exact same thing. William, if God, and I'm just going to pick on you, if God told you to step out today and start a church, and you truly knew it from God, I would tell you, you better get to stepping. And you better do it. Okay? If you're wrong. You you do what God tells you to do. That's why people, when they come to me, well, God told me to come to this church. Well, good, I'm glad you're here. Well, God told me to leave this church. Bye. <laughs> it's the same thing my pastor told me, when, which, who I dearly admire, Tom Ruane. Uh, the day that we, I helped build the Kaufman County Cowboy Church, uh, we did a lot of work on it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The day that we moved from the fairgrounds over to the Kaufman County Cowboy Church, that Sunday, we were moving stuff, our final stuff. My truck was loaded. I unloaded my truck and I told Tom, I said, this is not where I'm supposed to go to church anymore. And Tom, in a sense, said, bye. He said, bye. I will never, and I told Terry this, I will never chase after you. I'm not going to do it. If you don't want to go here, then go somewhere else. Okay? I'm, I'm not going to. Okay? I do what I'm supposed to do here, and I'm not going to chase after anybody. If you're, if you're expecting me to come and search you up, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. You're, this door is open. You know when it's open. You know the times it's open. If you want to be here, be here. If you don't want to be here, bye. It's just that simple, okay? We're here to worship, fellowship with one another, and I welcome anyone and everyone that wants to come. Anyone and everyone. But if you don't want to be here... Don't be here. Go somewhere else. And it happens all the time. It happens to all churches. Oh, yeah. It happens to all churches. But the thing is, the pastor should not have should not chase after people. Okay? You go where God leads you to go. Alright? Alright. It's very, very important to understand this. 
God said, I have nobody to swear by because God is above any and all things. He is the top of the top, the cream of the crop. So he swore by himself. He says, on my honor, this is what I will do. Because we're going to see that in just a little bit. A promise and an oath. He took an oath to himself saying, I will do what I say I'll do. So when God tells us that he's going to heal us, believe it. When God tells us he's going to take care of it, believe it. When God tells us he's going to be with us and never forsake us, believe it. Because God don't lie. All right? God doesn't lie. All right, so uh, Abraham never received the promise because he died at a certain age. And he didn't see the millions of people that are Christians today. Christians by faith. Remember, you're saved by faith. Remember that? You're saved by faith. Grace. God's, God's love for you. That's what saves us. And Abraham is the father of our faith because he was the first to just, despite everything, to believe and trust God 100%. All right? All right, 16. For men indeed swear by the greater... And an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Okay. These are the two things that God is going to tell us to do, but two unchangeable things. Number one, the promise. God doesn't lie. All right? If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. All right, so that's the first, the promise. The second one is the oath. He swore by himself. So he's not going to break his own oath, especially if he swore by himself, because then he would be an untrue God. So by the two things, which one is the oath, the other is the promise. All right, continue on. That by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Okay, Those stop here for just a second, please. Remember the song they sang uh, uh, Sunday? It says, uh, an anchor holds. Mm -hmm. Remember that song? That, it comes from this scripture right here. Okay? That's where that song comes from. The anchor, now that anchor is Christ. He is our anchor. And there's nothing that can pull that anchor out of the of the um, of our, of unsecuring us, if you will, in our salvation and in and, uh, uh, and the grace of God and the love of God. There's again, I go back over to John and uh, ten, uh, ten twenty nineteen and twenty, I think it is, where Jesus says, "No one can snatch you out of my hand." Those I, that my Father has given me, no one can snatch them out of my hand. And then it goes on to say that no one can snatch them out of God's hands. So if you're in God's hands and you're in Jesus' hands, who's going to be strong enough to take you out of them? Nobody. Nobody can. Okay? Nobody can. And that's what he's talking about. Jesus is our anchor that holds our soul firm and secure. All right? Holds our soul firm and secure. So if Jesus has you, how can you lose your salvation? Even, and I'm just going to say this, even if you say some stupid stuff, okay, how can you lose it? If, if the anchor holds you solidly in Jesus' hand, and nobody can snatch you out of Jesus' hand, nobody can take you out of God's hand, how can you lose your salvation? Are you stronger than Christ? Are you stronger than God? No. Okay? Just because you have a, a temporary insanity or stupidity or whatever you want to call it, all right? Now, it goes back to over in the uh, book of, uh, I think it's 1 John, where it says, those who left us are, were never among us. Okay? Again, this is why I say all the time, only you and God know if you're truly saved. I, I truly, truly, 100%, without a, my peanut brain mind, I doubt, I did, never doubt that Terry's not saved. Okay? But I don't know what her heart is. She tells me what her heart is. I see what her heart is. And by the evidence, remember, by their fruit you will know who is saved and who isn't. By that evidence, I truly believe that she is saved. But is she saved? Only her and God really know. 
Only she knows whenever she, her confession of faith, only she knows if she really meant it or not. And of course God knows. I don't know. I truly, by the fruit, believe that she is. There's not a doubt in my mind at all. But I'm just a person. Okay? But her and God know. You see what I'm saying? They know. And if God has her, there ain't nothing in the world that I can do to take her away from her. Better not be anyway. Okay? Because if I did, then she was never really saved. Do you, you see what I'm getting at? All right? If you didn't truly mean it in your heart, whenever you said it, you're probably not saved. All right? Oh, well, I did it because my friend did it. Well, that don't work that way. Okay? It doesn't work that way. Well, I did it because my wife told me if I don't do it, I'm, going to, I'm not going to sleep in the bed tonight. Okay? <laughs> whatever it is. I mean, I'm making light of it, but whatever it is. Only you really know. And I hope you have. And if you have, then Christ is your anchor. All right? The anchor of your soul, holding you firm and secure. All right, continue, please. Both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. All right, in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was the, we're going to look at a little bit more about him right now. Back over when Abraham paid a tenth to Melchizedek, over in Genesis 14, yeah, Genesis 14. Uh, uh, it says that uh, he was the king of Salem, which means the king of peace. Jesus is our king of peace, etc., etc. We're going to learn even more about it, who Melchizedek was, and it will enlighten you a little bit more as to Christ being the incarnate priest of Salem, or the incarnate Melchizedek over in with Abraham. So, again, Melchizedek was in the very beginning over there in Genesis 14 uh, with Abraham. Abraham met him, met him on the road after he had uh, won a big victory and all this and had a bunch of stuff. And he remember we talked about giving a tenth. He gave a tenth to Melchizedek. And that's where the Jewish law of giving a tenth is. And he's going to talk about that even more in here in chapter 7. All right? So, chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10. Bam! This is good stuff. This is if the Jews would start reading here in chapter 7. And read chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter, and then uh, finish with chapter 11. There ain't no way on this God green earth that they could remain non believers. Because this is going to lay it out so simple that you'd have to get your neighbor to help you not understand it. I'm, I, it's just going to be so simple when we get into these chapters, all right? Why we should be believers, all right? All right, keep going. And the purpose of Christ. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Okay, stop there for just a second. Now, who is this Salem? Like? King of righteousness? King of peace? Yeah, it's Christ. Okay? All right, keep going. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor ends of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Okay, and who does it sound like even more? Now, it sounds like it is, right? No beginning, no end. Now, we know, we know that Jesus had a heavenly father and an earthly mother, right? All right? That was only so that Jesus, the man, being 100% man while he walked the earth, had to come through a woman to be man, all right? But he had a heavenly father, all right? So he didn't have an earthly father, but he had to have the man Jesus, but he had to have an earthly mother in order to be the son of man. Are we okay on this? Do we understand this? Why, why this had to be done? Jesus himself, if you will, really and truly has no mother and no father. Why? Because he was in the very, very beginning with God. 
Remember whenever God said over in Genesis uh, 2.26, he says, and we will make man in our image. Okay, well, there has to be more than one to be an hour, right? right? And so there was Jesus, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit present. And that's why God said, we will make man in our image. In our image, man was made one male and female. Remember that? All right, so Jesus... Not the baby Jesus as we know him, or the man Jesus as we know him, but Jesus, the physical God that we learned over in Colossians. Jesus is the full deity of the invisible God. Remember that over in uh, chapters 2, uh, 229 and, and uh, come on, one, uh, I think it's 115 or so. Yeah, it is. In chapter 115. He is the, uh, the completeness of the deity of, of the invisible God, uh, 115 and then 229 in uh, uh, Colossians. It explains it. And it also, matter of fact, I believe it's here in Hebrews 2. Uh, okay, maybe it's not. It's over in John, I believe. But anyway, I, I don't want to get into that. The whole thing we need to remember is, is that Jesus existed in the very, very beginning. Okay? In the very beginning, he was. He was never not. Okay? Jesus was never not. He always was, just like God is. Alright? And so, in, in reality, Jesus does not have genealogy because he is the beginning. Alright? And he does not have a mother and father because he was in the beginning. Now, as the man Jesus, the earthly man, we know he had a heavenly father and an earthly mother in order to become man as well. All right? Okay. We got, are we okay with all that? Yeah. Okay? All right. I know it sounds kind of maybe wishy-washy a little bit, but Jesus was and still is and will forever be. All right? Okay. Verse 4. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch... Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are the sons of Levi, who received the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the line, the loins of Abraham. Okay, stop there for just a second. Now, he's talking about the tribe of Levi. Levi is one of Jacob's children. Remember Jacob? He actually had like 13 children. And uh, uh, Joseph was one of them. Uh, Japheth is one of them. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Uh, I didn't look up where you could find the children of Jacob. But anyway, remember it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob was the son of uh, Isaac. Isaac was, the, excuse me, the son of Abraham. In the lineage of Jacob who became Israel, Jacob wrestled with God, remember that, and Jesus, if you will, the incarnate Jesus, and Jesus touched his hip, and there he walked for a limp from then on, and God changed his name from Jacob to Israel, and therefore, they went from the clan of the Hebrews, if you will, to the clan of the Israelites, because God changed their name to the Israelites, <clears throat> because of Israel. Jacob's children... One of them was Levi. And Levi did not receive an inheritance because he was given the priesthood. Levi was given the priesthood. And everybody from the lineage of Jacob were to contribute to the priesthood. Therefore, the tenth of the Jewish laws, that's where it says right here, now the law requires that the descendants of Levi who become priests to collect a tenth from the people. What people? The Israelites. The Hebrews. All right. Remember this book was written to the Hebrews. So this is another implication, if you will, of the giving a tenth of your tithes or a tenth of your goods. It actually says a tenth of your first fruits to the priesthood. Okay? Which we come to today's time on giving a tenth to the church. Okay, which is the same thing, the priesthood. However, that is a Jewish law. We talked about this last week, I think, or week before. That is a Jewish law. 
God says over in the New Testament, and we're fixing to get into the New Covenant. We're going we're gonna to find out why the Old Covenant was done away with and the New Covenant was in, or is in. And we are under the New Covenant, which is the covenant of grace. The Old Covenant is the covenant of the law, which is the Jews are still under. This, the Levi tribe here, if you will, a part of their law, the Jewish law, is to receive a tenth from the Israelites. That's the Jewish law. It's The Jews are still held to that. They are to give a tenth. You're not of the Jewish law, and you're not underneath the law, the covenant of, of law. You're under the covenant of grace. If you read over in, uh, I believe it's in uh, either First or Second Peter, uh, and it's in a couple of the other scriptures, it says you are to give from what you don't, from what you have, not what you don't have. You are to give with a cheerful heart. You are to give as God directs you to give. All right, you're not you're not under the law to give a tenth. It is a very good uh, guiding point, I guess. You, what, is, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, a very good rule of thumb. A very good rule of thumb, if, if you want to use that. And if God says, if you, in your heart, if God says you need to give a tenth and you feel like you need to give a tenth, then that's what you need to give. But what if God says you need to give 20%? Then you need to give 20%. That's right. You better do it. What? That's right. <laughs> I know of some people who give 90% yeah. because they can. Wow. As long as you can do it from a cheerful heart. God, please understand this. God does not want you not to have electricity. He does not want you to not have water. He does not want you to not have groceries. He does not want you to have medical uh, care or whatever you want to call it. Your medicines, your prescriptions, all this kind of stuff. Please, 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 please. Do not think that you are giving to God if you're giving out of what you don't have or what is going to make you destitute. Oh, this is my last quarter, but i got to give it to God. Yeah. No, that's not what God wants. Go. No, 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 stay with me on this. If you're given the last of your money, all right, and I'm going to use money, if you're given the last of your money, and now you're going to have to do without. Remember the uh, the old lady when Elijah came to her, and he says, "This is our last bit of bread and, and bit of uh, oil, and so I'm going to make you a cake." Elijah says, "You make me a cake, not you. This is we were saving this because this we're going to die. This is all we got left, and after we eat this, we're going to die because we got nothing else." Elijah says, "Believe God, trust God, and you provide." Elijah was God's man. And he says, you give to God, and here you go again, you give to God and see if God doesn't bless you, all right? She made the cake for Elijah, he ate it, and then all the neighborhood, he, he, they took their, their bowls or whatever you call them, their pots, and went to all their neighbors and says, give us some oil and some flour and all that stuff, and they came back and every one of their pots were full. They had so much they had to give it away to other people. And it's just the simple story is, is that you do as God directs you to do and see if he won't bless you. Because he will. So, I have to say, so if you are giving grudgingly, please, please keep it. Because it's going in a vat of blessings. And we don't want, remember this, the story of the yeast working through the whole batch and running the whole batch? Jesus talks about it several times. We don't want that yeast in there, all right? That unleavened bread, that pure bread that the Jews eat, that's what we want. We want the purity, what really comes from your heart. And if, if it's not coming from your heart, please keep it, because I don't want it in this church, all right? If you come in here with a bad attitude, go home, okay? I don't want you in here. You, you see what I'm saying? If you come in here with a, the glass is half full, all right, <laughs> Okay? Come in with that attitude. Alright? Come in with an expectation. God is going to do some wonders in my life today. Come in here to worship God. Don't come in here, oh, I don't know if God will let me, you know, make it through the day, blah, 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 blah. You know, attitude of gratitude. Attitude of oh, yeah. gratitude. Yeah. Just, our lights are out, our water's frozen, all that. But you know what? We got a warm bed we're in. Alright? Our house was nine degrees last week. Nine degrees in our house. All right? 
We had one toilet and one spigot working on the cold See, side. That was a blessing. It, mm -hmm. That's what she said. She goes, well, at least we got some water. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, she even got on to me. Why'd you turn the water off? Don't turn the water off. It's the only spot that we got. You know, uh, when we left uh, the uh, steakhouse uh, Friday night, we got home, we got a busted water line in there. Water all over the house, all over the kitchen. Oh. Anyway, it's been a fiasco, but, you know. But, we still got a house. Okay, we still got a place to live. Now we got gas, so we got heat. Yeah. I mean, we're cooking, baby. We're good, you know. It's all attitude with gratitude. Be thankful for what you have, not complain about what you don't have, right? Amen. 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 All right? Because you can always have less, believe me. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, Kathy. I was just going to say what you just said. We don't do our tithes as if we're paying a debt or a bill. Every we're not. Month. You're right. We do it from our heart and a blessing. You bet. You bet. And I'm going to say this too, and I, I know most of y'all know this, but some of the people watching and all that, do not pay your tithes with a credit card. Don't pay your offerings with a credit card. Don't go in debt. Don't go in debt to try to give God some money. He will not. He will not honor that. Okay? It's not your money, number one. Number two, he says, a debtor not be. So in other words, he's saying don't live in debt. Well, certainly don't put yourself in debt. You're not blessing God by giving him something that is going to burden you. Remember what Jesus says? Those who are weary and heavy laden come to me because my burdens are light. Okay? My burdens are light. Don't ever pay your tithes and your offerings with a credit card. Please. Please, please, please. That's the reason we don't. Uh, at some point in time, we will do a kiosk thing with an ATM where you can do your debit card because that is your money. All right? to do a debit card, and if you want to pay your tithes that way or whatever, uh, if you want to give to God, and you know what, I don't care if you give a penny, a nickel, a quarter, a dollar, or $10,000. I Just to let you know, I never see that. I don't want to see it, and nobody else sees it. That is only our secretaries know that. Nobody else knows what your tithes are, and nobody else is going to know as long as I can help it. Only our secretaries, because they have to keep an accounting, okay? It's between you and God. It's between you and God. So give from a cheerful heart. If you can't give from a cheerful heart, don't give. God understands. God understands. You are not required to pay a tenth. You can't come to God and say, okay, well, God, I know I've got to pay a tenth. So, <laughs> do I really have to pay a tenth? Are you sure? Don't do that. If you can't give from your cheerful heart, then you need to keep it until you can get cheerful and realize your blessings, and then you'll give as God directs you to give. Okay? All right. Can we, can we start to stop there? Okay. But uh, Nora wants to keep going. Six. <laughs> I just wrote an arrow. Six. We're on six. On six? Seven. Okay. All right. So we're going to start, start on six. All right. Well, what we're going to learn is, is that there is a priesthood, and that priesthood, Jesus is the priest of, he is the highest priest that ever will be, and God made him that priest, all right? We are to give to God. When you give your tithes and your offerings, yes, it keeps our lights on, it brings us donuts, it makes our coffee, it buys our tables, blah, 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 blah. All for the Lord's work. If we didn't receive tithes and offerings, Terry and I pay tithes and offerings. If we didn't receive those, we couldn't keep the store open, uh, the door open. Because believe me, I can't afford it. <laughs> okay, I can't. So we all put our funds together, if you will, to support the church. That's why we support ministries and on and on and on and on and on and on. All right. So your tithes don't go. I'm going to put it this way. Your tithes don't go to me. They don't go to Carolyn. They don't go to Myra. They don't go to Edie. Okay? They go to the church. And they keep an accounting of it for us so that we know that we're able to keep our doors open. All right? Which, in other words, means that we're able to do God's work. 
which is to serve each other. Right? That's what your tithes and offerings are for. If you want to know what your money goes to, audit team, right? <laughs> Myra will be more than happy to have you as a part of the audit team so that you can look at our books and you're entitled to look at every receipt for that quarter, every receipt. You can see where every penny went for that quarter, all right? But you've got to step up and do it. And you have to be a member of the church, because if you're not a member of the church, the books are not open to you, okay? But to all members of the church, they are open, except for the tithing. Only our secretaries know what the tithing is, and nobody else is to know, all right? Okay? Everybody got that? Everybody good with everything? So if you want to know where your, your tithes and offerings go, get with those three ladies, and they'll hook you up. All right? All right. We good with everything? Yes. yes. All right. Great. All right. Uh, those of you who are watching online, I hope you've enjoyed our Bible study. I know we got to talk about some church business, but I felt as though it was reverent. Uh, is that it? Relevant. Right? Relevant. That's the word I'm looking for. Relevant. And uh, so, uh, hey, come join us on Sunday morning. We would love to have you here. If you're not uh, in our neighborhood, if you're close to a church that teaches the Word of God, Please go to your church or that church and learn who Jesus is. All right? Uh, who's going to pray us out tonight? Somebody other than me. Come on. Step up. I will. All right. Thank you, sister. Heavenly Father, we just give you the praise and the glory, Lord, for everything that you give to us. We are so grateful that we live in a country where we can still come and gather Amen. and study your word. Father, we know that your word is so important. It shows us why we need to know that we need to know. Amen. And we certainly know that we need to know if we're going to be with you or we're not going to be with you. Amen. And, and, and then, Lord, and you, you need to help us to teach other people, to show other people Excellent. what we're talking about when we're talking about going to spend eternity with you, Lord. And that when people think they're dying, just going to go to hell and that's the end of the world, they need to know that it's not the end of the world. That's forever and ever and ever. That's right. Father, we just ask that you bless everyone on the prayer on the prayer register. We know, Father, that you are the true physician and you can take care of every Amen. little thing that we have wrong. And to you. Everything that we need. And also on our prayer book, Father. It's just, this book is just to show them that we are praying for them. And you know what they need when their names are there. Father, we just give you the praise and the glory for everything that you do for us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you guys for being with us, and we'll see you Sunday or next Wednesday. God bless you.